Over 2,300 congregations have left the United Methodist Church since the last General Conference, and the number is rising. For comparison, the whole denomination of the Evangelical Free Church in America has only 1,300 churches, and the conservative Presbyterian denomination, the Presbyterian Church in America, has 1,911. This is a massive exodus from the largest mainline Protestant denomination in the USA. Let's quickly review how we got here. In February 2019 was the UMC's yearly general conference, and a vote was taken on whether to keep certain words in their book of discipline, particularly this part. The practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. Therefore, self-avowed practicing homosexuals are not to be certified as candidates, ordained as ministers, or appointed to serve in the United Methodist Church. Different plans were made on how to deal with this wording and also how to deal with a potential breakup in the church, seeing that everyone knew that this would be a contentious issue. Those who wanted to keep the wording voted for what was called the traditional plan, and in the end, this plan passed with 53 to 47% support. The UMC is a worldwide denomination with about half the membership outside of the U.S., and it was those votes that led to this plan passing, since polling has shown that the majority of U.S. United Methodists don't view homosexuality in that way. Nonetheless, there are many traditionalist American United Methodists, both in the pews and also in the pulpits. And they won, right? Well, reality is that the traditionalists are leaving the UMC in droves, because although the Book of Discipline has not been changed, there are still many UMC churches that are promoting full LGBT acceptance, and ministers that are in gay relationships are not being disciplined by their regional conferences. In fact, all the way back in 2016, Karen Oliveto in an openly lesbian relationship was elected by her conference to be bishop. This led in 2017 to the UMC's high court saying that she was in violation of the Book of Discipline, but that they would leave any enforcement to the conference, which, seeing as they had elected her in the first place, has done nothing about the matter. Also in 2016, at the general conference, over 100 UMC clergy and clergy candidates came out as gay. The traditionalists didn't see much of a way forward in the current UMC, so the next plan was for a way to get out smoothly. For a while, this was the Protocol of Reconciliation and Grace Through Separation, which allowed churches in a set time frame to exit with their property and even receive millions of dollars from the UMC. This plan was created with a hope of being passed with the support of people from across the spectrum of the UMC, but in the years since, support for it has crumbled and it's considered to be basically dead. However, the traditional plan itself contained an exit plan, which is now part of the UMC Book of Discipline. The section on disaffiliation from the UMC begins, Because of the current deep conflict within the United Methodist Church around issues of human sexuality, a local church shall have a limited right, under the provisions of this paragraph, to disaffiliate from the denomination for reasons of conscience regarding a change in the requirements and provisions of the Book of Discipline related to the practice of homosexuality or the ordination or marriage of self-avowed practice practicing homosexuals as resolved and adopted by the 2019 General Conference or the actions or inactions of its annual conference related to these issues which follow. Following that are several specifics. The ability to exit the UMC under this clause expires on December 31, 2023. A two-thirds majority vote of the members is required. The terms of exit are set by the Board of Trustees of the particular church's annual conference. The church must make payments to fund pensions for retired UMC clergy and the church is to continue to pay their apportionments to the UMC for 12 months beyond the disaffiliation. In exchange, churches are dismissed from the UMC and get to retain their property. The terms of this exit plan are not as generous as the Protocol of Reconciliation and Grace Through Separation, so for a while, congregations were considering holding out in the UMC until the next general conference to hopefully pass the protocol and then decide on exiting the UMC. However, in the over three years following the 2019 General Conference, the UMC has pushed off holding its next General Conference due to COVID-19, and now the plan is to hold the next one in 2024. That means by the time such a protocol could be brought to the conference, the traditional plan's built-in exit would expire. If a congregation waits until the next General Conference to procure a path to exit, and no plan is passed then, there's the risk that they could be stuck in the UMC and have to surrender their property if they wanted out.
March 3rd of 2022 was when the news came out that the General Conference would be postponed to 2024. On May 1st, the Global Methodist Church was launched. This was the beginning of a new traditionalist denomination, and many of the churches leaving the UMC are joining the GMC. Prominent UMC ministers, along with lawyers and influential figures, called for people to exit right away and not wait for a general conference. So churches have been doing just that. On November 13, 2022, 58 churches in the Louisiana Conference departed the UMC. On December 3, 439 Texas churches left. On December 10, 198 churches left the North Alabama Conference. But things have not always come easy. Another requirement to leave the UMC is that a church's annual conference approve the disaffiliation. On November 19, the Arkansas Conference approved the exit of 35 churches, but three of the disaffiliations were denied. One of these, First United Methodist Church of Jonesboro, has received particular media attention. Unlike some of the disaffiliating churches, there was significant disagreement in this church about leaving the UMC. A Facebook page called Stay UMC Jonesboro was created where members who disagreed with the congregation's leadership made their voices heard. The church had barely cleared the 66.7% hurdle in their congregation vote with 69% voting to leave. At the Arkansas Conference's meeting, questions were raised about whether the process leading up to the vote had been fair. The unprecedented act of the conference blocking the disaffiliation means that the church would have to redo the entire disaffiliation process. The church's pastor, John Miles, called a meeting to once again vote on leaving the UMC and to approve new bylaws, and he was warned by UMC leadership that the meeting would be in violation of the UMC's Book of Discipline. Those in opposition to the church leaving the UMC boycotted the meeting while around 650 members did attend and the votes to adopt new bylaws and leave the UMC were passed by over 98%. The following day, the bishop suspended Pastor Miles, and the Arkansas Conference claimed the title to all the church's property. A few days later, the church filed a lawsuit against the Arkansas Conference. In defense of this unprecedented situation, the bishop pointed to the fact that only three of the 38 congregations seeking to leave were prevented from doing so, that when the disaffiliation was clear-cut, churches were allowed to leave. But recent events in Georgia were not so precise. On December 28, 2022, the Georgia Conference announced that they would no longer approve any disaffiliation requests before the 2024 General Conference, which means that by that time, the ability to disaffiliate under current rules would be expired anyway, essentially trapping the churches in that conference in the UMC with an unclear future about how they may ever be able to leave and retain their property. In the email announcing the policy, the Georgia Conference stated, as a result of the misleading, defamatory, and false statements and materials shared with with local church members by certain organizations, as well as clergy and lay members of various churches and outside groups, we do not have confidence in the validity of upcoming church conference disaffiliation votes. After lengthy periods of discussion and consultation involving the cabinet, the board of trustees, and appropriate conference leadership, we have agreed that our annual conference cannot rely upon such votes for purposes of negotiating a gracious exit. Traditionalists have seen these actions as signs of bad faith from the more liberal leadership of the UMC in the United States, while the leadership making these actions have decried what they view as misinformation and fear-mongering about the future of the UMC. Another such policy decision that the traditionalists have decried was the December 14 decision by the UMC Judicial Council that there would be no new elections for General Conference 2024. Basically, the council said that the 2024 conference is not actually a 2024 conference, but simply a rescheduled 2020 conference. Since the delegates had been elected back in 2018 and 2019 for that conference, according to the council, it would be disenfranchising those delegates to not let them serve. As a result, though, the original allocation of delegates stays the same. The impacts of this lead to unusual results. For example, the Northwest Texas Conference in December 2022 approved the disaffiliation of 140 45 of its around 200 congregations. As a result, this conference is one quarter the size it was before and three quarters less traditionalist. However, in the next general conference, it will still be represented with delegates as if it still had 200 congregations. This means that the quarter of remaining congregations will have an outsized influence in the voting. This situation will play out through all conferences where churches disaffiliate. The more traditionalist a conference was, the more the remaining less traditionalist churches will be overrepresented in the general conference. By these rules, there will likely be an overrepresentation of moderate and liberal voices in the next general conference, enough perhaps to shift the numbers against the more traditionalist voices coming from places like Africa. Even though over 2,000 churches have left the UMC and the US, 
the U.S. will still get 55.9% of the delegates as if nothing happened. Meanwhile, for the churches that have left, the vast majority are expected to join the Global Methodist Church, but there are other options. In October, White's Chapel United Methodist Church in South Lake, Texas, announced their intentions to leave the denomination and announced the formation of another alternative. That White's Chapel wants to leave the UMC at all was considered somewhat of a surprise. They self-describe as being a church of the messy middle and have said, we are a congregation that practices a traditional view of marriage. However, we acknowledge that members of our congregation have a variety of perspectives on same-sex marriage and ordination standards. We reject the practice of compartmentalizing people into categories according to their actual or perceived perspectives. White's Chapel's new option is the Methodist Collegiate Church, which self-identifies on its new website as a cooperative, voluntary association of like-minded, common-hearted congregations and ministries. The Methodist Collegiate Church was established to create a new form of connectionalism one of shared ministry, equal accountability, and practical governance. Evangelical at its core and grace-filled in its practice, this partnership of autonomous Wesleyan churches seeks to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world and equip disciples for the life of ministry. They also answer some frequently asked questions. What's the difference between the Methodist Collegiate Church and the Global Methodist Church? The MCC is focused on empowering the local church and sharing leadership authority. We seek to limit the discipline at the collegium level to doctrines we hold in common and the organizational and connectional structures we choose to employ. We emphasize connectionalism as an organizing principle. How will the Methodist Collegiate Church handle accountability from church leaders? What is the process to go through holding leaders accountable? How does it improve upon and solve issues currently found in the United Methodist Church? The local church is responsible for holding its leaders accountable. The Commission on Ministry of the Collegium and the deans of the colleges in the Collegium will be available to assist the local church, pastor, slash parish relations committee. The fellowships and societies will work to build peer collegiality and accountability. This new polity structure will see groups of around 10 churches join to form a college anchored by a cathedral. Colleges will then join together to form a collegium, which elects a dean to lead it. However, they emphasize that member churches will remain financially and administratively independent. In the MCC's new transitional book of discipline, they also say, Scripture and tradition lift marriage between one man and one woman as the proper relationship for human sexuality. We reject all forms of sexual exploitation, including pornography, promiscuity, adultery, and sex trafficking of any kind. Similarly, in August of 2022, another option appeared when five former UMC churches, including Christ Church in Fairview Heights, Illinois, and the Story Church in Houston, Texas, announced the formation of the Foundry Network. Of the network's position on the presenting issue of sexuality, Brian Collier, the pastor of another of the churches, the Orchard Church in Mississippi, said, Our position has always been that the Bible's very clear about sexuality, and you don't have to have an extreme view of sexuality that doesn't embrace people where they are. You need to be able to say you stand on the truth. We wanted to be full of truth and full of grace. We felt like the argument that was brewing in United Methodism was going to force us to be one or the other. Since the announcement, several other churches have joined the Foundry Network and more are considering. So with all this exiting going on, where does this leave the United Methodist Church? It's yet to be seen what will take place outside of the United States. On that front, in September of 2022, all of the African bishops, except for the head of the churches in Nigeria, repudiated the Wesleyan Covenant Association and the Africa Initiative, which were working to influence the African churches to leave the UMC and join the Global Methodist Church. In their statement, they said that the Africa Initiative was working with Wesleyan Covenant Association to destroy our United Methodist Church. The sole holdout bishop, John Wesley Johanna of Nigeria, stated, the Africa Initiative and Wesleyan Covenant are pushing for obedience to the Bible and the Book of Discipline. Why should we not associate with them? But within the United States, most estimates say that by the end of 2023, three to 5,000 churches will have left the UMC. The window is rapidly closing because not only is the end of 2023 the deadline, churches need that annual conference approval. And many of the annual conferences have set special sessions for this purpose sometime in the first half of 2023. If a church misses getting annual conference approval then, they won't be able to meet the deadline. The UMC had 30,000 churches in the U.S., so over 10% and possibly as high as 20% of churches will leave when all is said and done. But all is certainly not said nor done at this point, and it's likely that there may still be many surprises ahead.